Friday, November 15th, so that's a week uh, from today. Uh, we will have, on Tuesday, obviously, I will, I will have a sample exam prepared. Uh, and we also have available right now a uh, take-home Excel assignment. We're probably not going to do it in class Excel. I don't know. We got. I got to think of that. But we do have a take-home Excel assignment uh, that is due next Thursday as well. Is that the fifteenth or the Tuesday? Because the fifteenth is Tuesday. Thursday. What? That's seventeenth. Oh, seventeenth. Yeah. A week from today. Wait. Right? Today's Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What's today? The tenth. I'm sorry. Yeah. The tenth. No. What's that? I like the seventeenth. No, that's that's craziness. No, okay. I mean you guys don't. Hey, I've been told, you know, by by students like you, that you would rather smaller test. You know, I, we could have one damn test at the end of this class. No, but no, you got yes. I used to do only three exams, including the final. Now I do like you know four, maybe five. So, so that's what you know. Who me? What do you mean, like? Just like shortening exams. I don't know. Teaching is an evolving process, you know? So, yeah, the 10th, I guess it is, right? Today's the third, so the 10th. So I have this wrong out here as well. Uh, I don't know why my mind was thinking opposite, but the third Excel assignment, 2016, is out here under Excel assignments, under take-home assignments, and it looks like this. It's only worth 20 points, but there's really only uh, five problems on it, and I'll show you, those don't take you long, uh, I'll show you, uh, we'll walk through this at the end of class, okay? Oh, and I do have the right date, it's due Thursday, November 10th, okay, so a week from today. Uh, you have a week to do it, you'll see it doesn't, it's not going to take you a lot of time to do it, all right, I'll, and I'll, I'll show you that, because you're going to use binome disk, which you use for homework, and the other discrete probability distribution we talked about, we'll talk about today, which is, uh, Kyle? Um. Do you say we have a test next Yes, yes. Yeah. So this is due and you'll be tested. Okay. Okay, so so next Thursday, November tenth, yes. Oh uh, well, it just affects you and Stefan though, right? That's fine. What I what I'll do, uh, I'll talk to your coach and maybe he can proctor it on the road. You guys take him to New York. Yeah. Well not together, but you can take it in New York. You probably have an assistant or something that will do that for me. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Let's double check when you can go to What time do you leave? When do you leave? Wednesday. Oh, you guys leave Wednesday? Wow. Well, this is, this is the playoffs, though, right? Yeah. All right. All right. I thought we check back in at the Yeah, check. Yes, definitely check back in with me because I'm not going to remember your, your issues. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we, we good. Next Thursday is another assessment round. All right. So just before we get into the material, what we're talking about, you know, just to kind of this chapter, is we're talking about discrete probability distribution. Discrete is characterized by what? It's definitely going to be in the model of choice. All right. Discrete is what? Discrete versus continuous. What does discrete mean? That's definitely going to be on the model of choice all the time. Continuous versus discrete random variable. What's the difference? Countable. Right, discrete means countable, right? Discrete means countable. Continuous means uncountable. So things like, you know, time is uncountable, right? I can slice it thinner and thinner. Um, you know, your, your weight is uncountable because maybe you don't exactly weigh 208 pounds, you weigh 208.65431. You know, there's an uncountable number of values that, that can take on. Discrete, if you think about it like integers, like, you know, how many children do you have? Well, you have zero, one, two, three, four. You know, that's how many, how many, uh, how, what did you score on the quiz? Zero, one, two, three, it's countable. So when it's countable, we showed, we can show the probability distribution in, in a table. We can put the values, and then we could put the probability of all those values, right? That was a discrete probability distribution table. That was the first thing we introduced. And we talked about using that table. We talked about a very important theorem called expected value. That was all under discrete probability distribution. We said there are special discrete probability distributions. Uh, and one of the special discrete probability distributions we're talking about is the binomial one. It's the result of something called a binomial experiment. 
And there are some characteristics. Definitely this will be on the volatile toy. There are some characteristics of the binomial experiment. What are the characteristics of a binomial experiment? Or what do you know about a binomial experiment? <coughs> bi means what? We have bi. Two, right? So there's so there's two outcomes. What we're interested in studying, we call it success. What we're interested in not studying, we call it a failure. So you know, you're going to play 20 games. Maybe we say win is the success and lose is the <coughs> failure. Uh, there is a fixed number of trials, like 20 games, right? That's a fixed number of trials. There's two outcomes on any given trial. And there's P, the probability of an outcome is uh, on any given trial. They're always independent. So uh, a couple things we did for homework. We said well, if it's a binomial experiment, which is nice, <coughs> is we have a formula. You know, if we want to do this by hand, that gives me the probability of uh, factorial. So it's, I believe it's n factorial over x factorial n minus x factorial p to the x power times 1 minus p to the n minus x power, right? So that was our formula. So I think the one I gave you by hand, let's do that one first, make sure we have an understanding there. And then we'll do a couple with Excel. Much more fun. 10 A and B, I think I gave you, right? With by hand? Yeah. All right, so a sign on the gas pumps of a chain of gasoline stations encourages customers to have their oil checked, claiming that one out of four cars needs to have oil added. If this is true, what is the probability of the following event? One out of the next four cars need oil. All right, so we need to identify N, X, and P. So what is our N? What is our number of trials here? Four, right, there's four cars. We're looking for the probability that one, so X is one, needs their oil checked. And what's the probability of success on any given trial? 25% because our original claim was one out of four cars need to have oil added. Very good. You see this, yes? So if we say N factorial is four factorial divided by, let's see, one factorial, four minus one factorial, P to the x power, 0.25 to the first power, 1 minus 0.25 to the 4 minus 1 power. You guys with me? So 4 factorial is really 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 1 is just 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. These cross out, and all I'm left with is a big fat 4. 0.25 to the first power is just 0.25. 1 minus 0.25 is 0.75 to the third power. So this becomes, you know, 4 times 0.25 is 1. So really, all I'm left with is 0.75 to the third power. And I get roughly 42.18%. Is that what you guys got? Yes. All right. Um, do we need to do B? You guys understand that method? Do we want to do B? No? The probability is like the P, the 2, 5, that stays the same, right? That's going to stay the same because overall we're saying one out of four cars. Okay. So every trial is 25% chance. But then the other two would change like just 2 and 8. With the accuracy. Very good. So this one, the number of trials would be 8. <laughs> And we're looking for two successes. Okay, so I go through the mathematical formula along with like that. All right, let's do a, a couple that I assigned you with Excel. Um, how about 16? 16. That was one I gave you guys, right? All right, so that is a good one. It's gambling based, which is. You know, always kind of fun. Uh, in the game of roulette, anyone ever play roulette? <coughs> no one? Very good, Tony. What do you do? Are you a color guy or you do a corner or what do you do? Oh, I like to do the thirds. The thirds? Okay. Yeah, it's really interesting. There's a lot of different ways to bet. You can bet even, odd, color, the bottom half. It's like Tony the thirds guy. But depending on how you bet, there's different odds and different paybacks. But believe me, 
it's all in the favor of who? It's all in the favor of the house. So you play enough, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, they're going to win. In the game of roulette, a steel ball is rolled on the wheel that contains 18 red, 18 black, and two green slots. If the ball is rolled 20 times, 25 times, find the probability of falling a bet. The ball falls in the green slots two or more times. Okay, so we still need to identify N, X, and P here, okay? So let's first identify N. That's typically the easiest. <laughs> what is N? Looks like it's the N is the same for A, B, C, and D. 25. We're doing 25 trials. Very good. And I'm looking for the ball, ball falls in the green slots two or more times. <coughs> So I'm really looking for x is greater than or equal to 2. That's what I'm looking for in this first one. And what are the odds of success on any given, in this case, a success is falling into a green slot. What's the odds of success on any given spin? Give it to me as a fraction or ratio. Two out of not 25. There's 18 black, 18 red, and two green slots. So how many, and they're all the same size. Yeah, so two out of 38. Two out of 38. Does that make sense? And, and what method did you use to figure out that probability two out of 38? Remember the three methods we used for probability? Classical, relative frequency, or subjective? Two out of 38. How did you come up with two out of 38? Classical, relative, or subjective? That's a good model of choice. Classical, right? Because, you know, like when we roll a die, we say it's one out of six chance of rolling a three. It's because there's six equal options, and there's one in a six chance. Of, same thing here, right? Classical methodology. Remember this? Relative frequency is based on history. Subjective is based on someone's personal opinion. Yes? Okay. So let's do this with Excel. So uh, I'm going to bring up, and I want to show you, ah, that's not, that's Word. Uh, let's bring up Excel, bring up a blank workbook, close, and let's make my it big so you can see. So a couple things. Uh, I'm going to do this first, okay? I'm going to say binome dist. And I need X, N, and P. Now think about this one. This one is saying two or more times. So I could, it could fall in the green zero times, one time, two times, three times, four times, all the way up to 25 times. That's not likely to happen. But I'm looking for the odds of two or more. So two or more is what I'm looking for. So I could figure out the odds of two plus the odds of three plus the odds of four. You know, I'd have to make a table and add those all up. What's another way I can get to two or more? What's another way I can get to two or more? What do I know about probability? Rachel? I know the whole damn thing, right, is one, right? All the probabilities added is one, yes? If I want two and up, Rachel's right, let's take one, everything, and subtract off one and down, right? That's like the mathematical, subtract is the mathematical operation for cut off. So I'm gonna say one minus binome dist. I'm gonna take one, 25. Now, two out of 38, I could figure out what that decimal is and enter it in, but the hell with that. Let's make Excel do the work. So I'm just gonna say two divided by 38 right here. Okay, I don't care what it is. Excel, you figure that out for me. Yes? Oh, yeah. Thanks. So 1 minus binome dist, 1, 25. I'm going to make Excel do the 2 out of 38. And do I want this to be true or false? Remember, I want to include the odds of 1 plus the odds of 0. So do I want the cumulative flag to be on or off? I want it to be true because I do want to cut off one and below. So I'm going to type in true. I hit enter, and it gives me 38%. Okay. You guys with me? Good. 
Let's do the next one. The next one, part B, says the ball does not fall into any green slot. So this one's easy, right? This one's easy. So does not. So what changes here? Still 25, still 2 out of 38. I'm looking for the probability that x is what? Equal to 0. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say equal binome dist. 0, 25 trials, 2 out of 38 is the odds of success. And I'm going to put false here because I'm just looking for the probability x is equal to 0. I hit enter, and it tells me 25%. Oops. Evan? They use false to the one Right. Right. False is if it's equal to, right? It's called a point probability. If you're equal to one thing, as Evan said, true will always give you cumulative. It doesn't go up, okay? It'll give you that number and everything below it. So if it's up, you know, if you guys want a little, like a little rule, I guess, if we're looking for x is equal to something, we're always going to use false, okay? So I'll build a little table here. If we're looking for x is less than or equal to something, and not so bad, we're just going to use true, okay? Because that's what the true does. It gives us that value and everything that comes before it. If we're looking for x is greater than something, we're going to do 1 minus, and we're going to use the true flag. Does that make sense? Because that's the kind of the pattern we're going through. Good question, Evan. Um, Let's look at C, okay? Letter C says the ball falls into black, black slots 15 or more times. So I'm looking for 15 or more times. So I'm looking for probably X is greater than or equal to 15. I'm still spinning this wheel 25 times, but my odds have changed because now success is a black slot. What would the odds change to here? Go ahead. 18 out of 38. Okay, 18 out of 38. So think about it. I'm looking for 15 or more. So I'm just going to abbreviate this with 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm looking for 15 and more. So what do I need to cut off, if you will? 14 and down. Very good. So I'm going to say uh, 1 minus binome dist. 14, 25, 18 out of 38, true. I hit enter, and it tells me, whoops, and it tells me 14%. Let's do the last one. Then I'm going to make one up as well. Uh, the ball falls into red slots 10 or fewer times. So still 25 trials. Now I'm looking for the probability x is less than or equal to 10. What is my probability now? Red slot. So red slots, 18 out of 38 still, right? Now this is nice because I'm looking for 10 and down. Well, because it's 10 or down, all that's known is is cumulative probability. My true does that for me. So I'm going to say equal binome dist 10, 25, 18 out of 38, true. Oh, you guys can't see that. I'm sorry. Binome dist 10, 25, 18. So that's going to give me the probability of 10 or down. And that comes out to like 29, like 30% roughly. This didn't uh, give me that, but let's say, let's say I ask you this, all right? Now, now, now pay attention a second. If I ask you the odds that it falls into a red slot between 20 and 15 times. 
Okay, so we haven't done a between one yet. What's the odds that the ball falls into a red slot between 20 and 15 times? So let's try to envision that. So, you know, it can fall in there. I'm going to abbreviate zero times, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, oops, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. I'm going to include 15 to 20. I want to find the probability that it falls into a red slot. So 18 out of 38 is still right. 25 is still right. Okay, what do we do here? Okay, what do we do here? I want to find the probability that it falls into a red slot between 15 and 20 times inclusively. Inclusively means it includes the end. Any ideas? Give me a way you could do it. If I was, there's one way I know you can do it. You should be able to do this. What's one way you can do it? Huh? Sorry about my table. Yeah, sure. So Eric's right. He could build a table that has all the probabilities. You do that in Excel pretty damn quickly, right? And then you just add the probability of 15 plus the probability, of, you know, just sum those together. That's one way we could do it, right? You guys know what I'm saying? What did Eric say? Yes, okay. What's another way to do it? Using cumulative probability. Think about using cumulative probability. And you have to do binome disk twice. Let's think about it. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, thanks. I think Tony knows. What's that? I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, sum like the two binomial disks. So one minus the binomial disk of two. All right, so you're saying one, and then we're going to cut off that, right? Yeah. But then we're still left with 21 and up. I like the way you're thinking. How about this, Tony? If I, if I put in 20, if I put in binome disk 20, right, and cumulative probability, what will that give me? That will give me 20 and down, right? If I do a binome disk 20 true, <coughs> it'll give me 20 and down. Very good. Then I need to cut off 14 and down. Does this make sense? So watch. If I do equal, uh, equal binome disk, and I do 20, 25, 18 out of 38, and then true, that gives me 20 and down, right? That's what it does. Cumulative probability of 20 gives me 20 and down. But we don't want 20 and down. We want between 15 and 20. So Tony said, hey, we have to cut off 14 and down. In math, what's the operator for cut off? Subtract, so I'm going to say <laughs> subtract minus, and I need 14 and down. Well, how do I get 14 and down? Binome dist 14, 25, 18 out of 38, true. And you notice in that whole thing I just typed in, no spaces, right? No spaces at all. That'll, that'll crap the bed. So just binome this 20 and down, subtract off 14 and down. It will leave me with 15 to 20. I hit enter, uh, control tilde. It tells me there's about a 14% chance that I win between 15 and 20 times, or it hits, goes in red 15 and 20 times inclusively, if I'm betting on red. I want to show you guys something because when you do the assignment, questions on this. So I guess I should add to this table. If we're between two things, so x is between a and b, right? I'm looking for the probability x is between a and b. And that's what I'm doing here. x is between a and b. I'm taking you know, <coughs> true of b. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking binome disk, cumulative probability of b, the bigger one minus the cumulative probability of A minus one, because we're cutting off, remember it was between 15 and 20, we took 20 and down and cut off 14 and down. Does this make sense? No, yes, Does that table help you or confuse you? No, help, okay. Uh, all right, so 
Let's say we are doing this for our take home assignment. Uh, I want to see both the results and the formula. Okay, so if you notice, and I don't know if I showed you this before, but if we do, I'm, you're seeing the formulas right now, and there's a, there's a toggle button. Uh, if you do the control key, control, CTRL, yeah, it doesn't seem right, and then plus the tilde key. You guys know what a tilde is? Some of you do. Um, over by your one, by the apostrophe, you'll see a little squiggle line, like some people have them above the letters in their names. I, I kind of, I should add that to my name. I think it'd be, give me a little style. Um, but if you do control tilde, that's, that's a toggle switch that shows you the value and the formula. You guys able to do that? Yes. So, uh, Mr. Boyd says, you want a picture of the both of them? Yeah, so what I'd like to do, so you're going to eventually put this in Word, right? So let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to insert, uh, let's do a table. And what do we have? One, two, three, four, five things. So let's insert a table. And let's do a two by five. <clears throat> And I'm going to do control tilde, and let's ah, let's try to do this first. So I'm going to copy. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to copy the formulas. Let's see if I paste it. Now it just goes. It doesn't into that one. <coughs> and then if I control tilde <coughs> and control C. And I paste that over, so I pasted the value. So I don't know if you need the ta the table keeps it separate though. So I can see that hey, uh, so this aligns with this, this aligns with this, this aligns with this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'd want to see both. The reason I want to see both is if you're wrong, if you just give me a number and you're wrong, I don't know what the hell you did, right? I don't know if you just missed a number, if you mistyped something, if you're really, you know, it's just a number. Uh, this way I can say like, oh, okay, you, you used the wrong value for X or N or P. Does this make sense? So I want to see both. I don't really care about the format so much, but I want to see both. Boy, you good? Okay. So that's for the take home assignment. <clears throat> any questions on any of the other homework problems? got your assignment here. I'm going to say, who is this? <laughs> I'm reporting you to campus, please. <laughs> All right. Any questions on that? Is he a business major? No. What's wrong with him? There's a lot wrong with him. What's his major? Uh, it's criminal justice and minor accounting. Minor accounting? Minor accounting. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to cover one more uh, discrete probability distribution. Okay, and this one, uh, I used my, I had, I had to take, I had a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics, which meant uh, I had to take 12 credits of language. I hated every minute, every language I took. Uh, but I only took French. Uh, so this is the only time I get to use it in my whole life is when I pronounce this distribution. So uh, this distribution is known as the Poisson distribution. Uh, it is a discrete probability distribution that refers to the number of events within a specific time period or region of a space. So we talked about the binomial experiment. Remember we were talking about number of trials, right? Number of trials. So the number of successes and a number of trials, like flipping a coin. Well, this distribution is a little bit different. We're talking about successes over time period, which happens a lot, like you know, maybe we average at our convenience store 10 customers per 10 minutes. 
Well, what are the odds that in the next 10 minutes we get five customers or 20 customers, right? So this would make a lot of sense if I'm you know, doing what they call queuing analysis in a convenience store. I'm trying to figure out you know, likely demand, okay? So this distribution has a lot of business implications for retail environments where you're trying to figure out how many customers might come in. Uh, it also, so it's over a specific time period or a region or space. Um, so like the number of typos uh, in a book. So maybe there's one typo for every five pages. What's the odds that in the next 20 pages we encounter four typos? You see what I'm saying? Over a region or space. Um, it talks about the number of cars arriving in a service station an hour. That is a, a Poisson distribution. The number of flaws in a bolt of cloth. That follows a, this distribution. The number of accidents in one day on a particular highway. That follows this distribution. Now, uh, it has uh, some characteristics like, the, like just like the binomial, a little bit different. The number of successes that occur in any interval is independent of the number of successes that occur in any other interval. So once again, uh, independence is important here. Uh, the probability of success in an interval is the same for all equal size intervals. The probability of success is proportional to the size of the interval. So the bigger the time frame, the bigger the time frame, the more likely we are to have an occurrence or a success. And as that interval gets smaller, the probability of a success equals zero. Okay, so equals zero. So I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you the formula, uh, but we're, I've decided we're not going to do this formula. Okay, the reason I show you, we did the binomial, and that's probably enough to do by hand. Uh, I want you to understand this formula a little bit. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do the work for this. We'll do it with Excel. Uh, but this is the formula. Okay, so we have uh, e, u, and x. So, and we have that factorial thing. So help me determine what those things are. So where have we seen X just in the last thing? What was X in our last thing? Go ahead, Stefan. What's that? That, yes, that is factorial, right? So that is, that exclamation point is factorial. So yes, we saw that again. And X is the number of success, right? So if I'm looking for What's the odds of five typos in the next 100 pages? Five would be X, right? So same thing as like when I said, what's the odds that we get you know, four reds in the next 25 rolls? Four is the X, so that's the number of success. How about this symbol? What, are, what is that symbol? We've seen that before, back in chapter three, I believe. What, what is that symbol? Measure of central location. Someone said it. It is the mean, it is the average. It, it goes by mu, right? Mu is what the average is. So a lot of times we'll get something like, let's do my, on average, three students visit me per day, right? Three students visit my office per day. That's an average, okay, that's an average. Three students per day. Um, how about this deal? Little e, not the rapper little e. Little e, what is little e? Anyone ever see little e? It is the base of the natural logarithm. You guys remember logarithms anywhere in your life? Okay, it's the base of the natural logarithm, and it actually is kind of an irrational number, uh, just like pi, like three, you know, pi is three point one four one five. Now it keeps going. Well. E is 2.71828, okay, and I, it's, a, it's a truncate, but it's 2.71828. We really don't have to know, right? The two things that are important to us, we really don't have to know E, know that it's involved, but the two things that are important to us are the mean and the X, okay? So let's, let's do one with Excel, and I'll show you this with Excel. But let me just make up, well, I think there might be one in the slides we can do. Let's do the one in the slides. Yeah, let's do this one. So a stats instructor has observed that the number of typo errors in new editions of textbooks varies considerably from book to book. After some analysis, he concludes that the number of errors is Poisson distributed with a mean of one and a half per 100 pages. 
The instructor randomly selects 100 pages of a new book. What is the probability that there are no typos? So we need to identify, in this problem, we need to identify X and we need to identify mu. Help, identify one of those things. <coughs> What's that? <coughs> Very good. The mean is 1.5 typos per 100 pages. Okay. A success is a typo. Typo is a negative thing, but that's what we're studying, so we call it a success, right? We're looking for the odds of how many typos in the next 100 pages. Zero, so X is zero. So here's the formula we're going to use in Excel. We're going to use equal plus one. We're going to use x, mu, and then true or false. What do you think the true or false means? The same as it meant for binomial. If it's true, it means cumulative. If it's false, it means point probability. So let's go to Excel. And let's figure this out. Equal x in our case is 0. The mean is 1.5. And we're talking about equal. So we're going to use false. 0, 1.5, false. So if we average one and a half typos per 100 pages, what's the odds in the next 100 pages we're going to get no typos? About 22%. Um, very good, we got that. Uh, let's do part B. Okay, and there's something I'm going to have to show you here. Part B says, suppose that the instructor has just received a copy of a new stats book. He notices there are 400 pages. What is the probability that there are five or fewer typos in this whole damn book? So we average one and a half typos per 100 pages. We're looking for the probability of five or fewer in the next 400 pages. So a couple things have to be changed here, right? We're looking for the probability that x is less than or equal to five. So what do you think is going to change in my formula? Because it's x is less than or equal to five. What, what, what flag is going to change, for sure? Yeah, it's going to go to true. Very good. The, the x is going to be 5. That's going to be true. But we have to adjust our mean, right? We have to adjust our mean according to the time frame or the region or space we're looking at. So in this case, if we average 1.5 typos per 100 pages, but we're going to look over 400 pages. What's the average then for 400 pages? If we average one and a half typos per 100 pages, how many would we average in 400 pages? Six. How did you do that? Well, it's a ratio. So if we average one and a half typos for every 100 pages, and I'm looking for, well, how many would we average then in 400 pages, right? It's, 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 a, uh, it's a ratio. When I have a ratio like this, how do I solve for mu? What do I have to do? Cross multiply. One and a half times 400 is 600. 100 times mu is 100 mu. Divide both sides by 100. We get six typos per 400 pages. So let's do this with... <laughs> Excel <coughs> equal Poisson. five six is our adjusted mean comma true. I hit enter and I get there's a forty four percent chance of five or fewer typos. So where could we use this? You know, this is uh, very useful in the service industry when you're trying to, you know, determine like staffing levels. So let's see. Let, let, let's pretend like 
Dr. Miko in my office. I run a, uh, I don't know, sometimes I get counseling, not counseling, it's advising time, right? So I, I run an advising center, right? So I'm you know, advising students right now. So let's say this, let's do a little, little say, let's say on average, um, on average, Dr. Miko has 10 students comes into my office per day. Okay. I want to know what that might look like. If that's if it's while well, it's distributed and 10 students per day that visit me on average, let's let's figure out the probability, you know, that no one visits me, you know, one person, two persons. And let's go the whole way, let's, you know, let's see what the possibilities are. Okay, two students. So I would want to build like a basically a distribution here, like a table. So how could we do that? Well, the same as we did, did that for binomial. So uh, let's do this. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say this is x and this is the probability of x. And I'm going to say 0, 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to drag the whole way down to, I don't know, let's drag down to, I don't know, 25. I'll make this smaller. So you can see it. Okay, so 0 through 25. Oh, that's too small. Okay, and I said 10 students visit me on average, so equal, well I should make it bigger before I do this, <laughs> see it? I'm going to do equal, Poisson. my x is a2 in this case, my mean is 10, and I want false. I hit enter, Oops, I need to do control tilde. And it looks like a very, change that to percentage. I'm going to drag that down. So the odds that no students visit me, very low. It looks like it's like less than 1%. The odds that one student visit me uh, also, uh, let's say 10 Oh yeah, it's percentage. So, 0.04%. Uh, two students visit me very low, less than a quarter percent. About three quarters percent, three students visit me. But you see, closer to the mean, you know, like 10, it's like 12%. 11, eight, it's like 11.25%. Uh, uh, and then it trails off as we go. Now, there's there's a chance 25 students visit me, but it's a very low chance. If I auto sum this column, it's close to 100% because there's I should have probably included like down to 50. Now, if I want to visualize that, okay, I'm going to show you something that's pretty cool. Let's, let's make this small. Uh, if you take my advanced Excel class, you'll learn neat tricks like this. Let's take, let's take B2 through B27 and highlight that. And let's go to the Home tab. You guys see the Home tab? Go to conditional formatting. And you see this thing that says data bars? Yes? Uh, pick, pick, pick a gradient fill. <coughs> I don't care which one. I'll do the blue one. But what it does, which is kind of cool, is if you can see that, it puts in bars that equate to the size of the number in the cell. So these are the two biggest ones. So you notice their bars are the longest. These are very small. So you can see what the distribution kind of looks like. It has a long tail, right? It kind of comes up, it peaks, and then it has a very long tail. Pretty neat, yes? Not, you guys are not impressed? Um, the other thing I could do with that is I just undid that. 
go to conditional formatting and do color scales. And let's do the green, yet red, yellow, which is kind of cool. So the green are the bigger numbers, right? So this is more likely. The red are the smaller numbers that's less likely. So kind of like a heat map thing, right? So that's called conditional format. Okay, so let's let's go to my example. And let's let's you guys, uh, instead of doing a book problem, let's do this. Ten students visit me per day. I want to know, let's say part A, I want to know that exactly five students visit me today. I guess it's up there, but do the do the poisson. I want to know the odds that I have uh, less than 50 visitors in a five-day week. 50 or fewer visitors in a five-day week. And I want to know the probability that I have, I don't know, more than 75 visitors in a five-day week. So figure those three things out. So I want to know 10 students visit me per day on average. I want to know the odds that I get exactly five students today. It's kind of up there. Uh, I want to know the odds that in a five-day week, I get 50 or fewer students. And I want to know in a five-day week, what's the odds that I get 75 or more students. <coughs> so do this, not with the table, but do, it, do a Poisson formula. Just fix that up. It actually comes from, and it's a true story, uh, Simone Poisson came up with distribution in the Prussian army. He observed that the number of deaths due to uh, like soldiers getting kicked in the head by mules uh, mm -hmm. followed like, yes, for real, uh, followed like, I guess, you know, risky business, you know, when you dealt with mules, and uh, was, was followed this distribution. So that's the guy that's been set by thing back. But, but things like you know customers arriving at your restaurant follows this distribution, right? So if there's an average, we can figure out the odds. Almost any kind of like human behavior over time, you know, like the arrival pattern follows this distribution. So you see this a lot in, in queuing analysis. And what's what's a queue? What's a queue? A lot of times the letter, not the letter after R or before R. What's a queue? Like a a queue is a line, right? So what kind of organizations are interested in queuing analysis? And they use this. What kind of inter organization would be interested in queuing analysis? Right. Tony? Walmart. Sure. Walmart, a bank, uh, a bar, uh, fast food, cheats, right? Convenience store. So convenience, they want you in and out, right? So if they don't have enough people to serve you, it takes you three minutes to get your MTO. You're, you're mad as hell. You're not coming back, right? Um, how about Disney World? What do people complain about Disney World? I'm not a big fan of Disney World, by the way. I've been there with kids. I've been there twice. Oh my god, it's awful. Yeah, I, I can't. I, I can't. I hate Disney. Like, I, I hope never to go back. It's not the happiest place in the world. My son, my 14 year old son, last time we were there, he was like six, right? We're at the, you know, that, uh, where they have those cars that do stunts and stuff like that. Yeah, and what was the place? It's called like Hammer Lights Action. Oh, it's where they do the car jumps and they go back. Yeah. It's like 98, right? I mean, it's ridiculously hot. You know, these metal bleachers are baking. My son's a big, he's a, you know, he's a man now. He's like 15. But he was, he's a big kid. He was, like, he was always like an extremely big kid. And he's like having like some kind of heat stroke thing going on. And I'm literally carrying him back to the van, you know, like through. And I, I think I like I, I had to like stop. I got woozy. And I'm like, this, this sucks. You know, like, what time of the year did you go? I'm like an idiot, like June, you know. Like, oh, that's, oh, that's, that's the worst time of the year. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a fan. But, anyways, they do a lot of uh, queuing analysis. 
because when you go to Disney, there's you know the people complain about one of the things they complain about is line, right? And when we are not being served, there's a, there's goodwill cost. You know what goodwill cost is? Probably some of you accountants know what goodwill is. What's goodwill cost? <coughs> What's a goodwill cost? No. Yeah, goodwill is like uh, you know it's hard to quantify, but it's you know it's extra because so. When, if I go to Disney and I have a bad experience and I don't ever come back, they really don't lose money, but there's opportunity lost. There's a goodwill cost that if I didn't have a good experience, right? So companies have assessed a goodwill cost while waiting in line, right? If I'm waiting in line, you know, there's a cost to that, right? There's a, there's a future cost to that. Maybe I say I'm never coming back. So how do places try to reduce goodwill costs? Like Disney especially, how do they try to reduce that goodwill cost? They've done a couple things. One thing they do is when you're waiting in line, how will they try to reduce that goodwill cost so you're not like sitting there stewing when I hate this place? What you thought I'm doing. Okay, well that's, that's one thing they've done is they make you feel like you're more in control psychologically by giving you that fast pass option, which is, it's just psychological. You don't really get to ride more, it's just, it's all psychological. I read, read articles on it, okay? Uh, but it, you feel like you're in control, right? You're like, oh, I fast passed that. You think you beat the system. So you get like a, a brain rush. You're like, I beat the system. I'm the best fast pass forever. You guys know what I'm talking about? So that was one way they do it. The other way, what else do they do? So when you're waiting in line. They added interactive elements inside the queue. So, yes, they add interactive elements in the queue. Sometimes even like like things come over to you. Like Goofy comes over and gives you a hug. You're like, well, how can I be mad? Goofy just hugged me. Yes. So they do that to try to reduce their goodwill cost in line as well. So. You know, think about it. all this stuff comes together in the business world. Accounting, marketing, uh, psychology. Do you guys do this or are you just look at me? Are you all done? All right. So I said two, 10 students visit me per day. What is the odds that today five students visit me? So. I'm going to go up here and say equal poisson. X is five, 10 false. And it tells me about 3.7%, okay? Now this one's a little different. I'm looking for the probability of 50 or less. So what flag, the, the false flag is gonna have to be true because it's cumulative probability, but I'm looking over a five day week. So if 10 students visit me per day, that's not the average I want to use. What do I want to do with that average? I need to adjust it. So if 10 students visit me per day, what's the average number of students visit me in a five day work week? 50, very good. So this one would look like this, equal, my X is 50 because I'm looking for 50 or less. My mean is also 50. And I'm gonna say true because I'm looking for the probability of 50 or less, so I want cumulative probability. You guys with me? I hit enter, and it tells me about 53%. Let's look at the last one. It says, what's the odds that more, 75 or more, visit me? Well, I don't have an or more flag. I can either do equal to, or I can do less than or equal to. And this is or 75 or more, so what am I gonna have to do to get 75 or more? cut off 74 and down, right? So one minus, so I'm gonna say equal one minus 74, the mean is still 50 because we're still talking about that 50 day or five day week and true, I hit enter and it tells me you know, not likely to happen, okay? Like very low percentage. I would like you to do for homework. We're getting out early today. So what are you going to do with that time? That's not a good use of that time. See, I, I'm of the opinion I use your time better than maybe you use it. That's kind of narcissistic, but... Um, like if you said I was going to call my mother and tell her I love her, that's a good use of your time, right? 
my friend my friend texted me back and said, Eric, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> He's very confused right now, too. Tell him to go back to bed. <laughs> Pick a better major. Um, I would like you to do, on page 94 and 95, I would like you to do 20, this is all with Excel, 22 through 23, no, no, yeah, 20 through 23. 20, this is all with Excel. You can also start, because now you know how to do binomial, you know how to do plus one. You can start on your take home. And then Tuesday of next week, which is like eight, right? We will uh, get ready for your assessment on Thursday. Okay? Questions for me? Is our take it making me Tuesday or Thursday? It's two Thursday. You have a week. But get it done Tuesday, right? Just get it done Tuesday. All right, Eric, I'm going to give you a credit. Have a good weekend. Good luck to the women's soccer team. Uh, good luck to everyone else. I would have been really mad if I left my note down. I literally, I didn't do it, and I stayed up, and I did it after the, the game. It was already like 1 o'clock when I did it. Wow.